Everything you want to do in life should be built on strong arguments. Why do you live in a big city? Why do you choose to become a doctor? Why do you vote for Republicans? Why do you want to go to art school? The way you build your arguments impacts your whole life. Whether you create these arguments internally, in your mind, on paper for assignments, or in conversations, trying to convince other people of your views. Do not make the mistake of ignoring this. Being able to construct a good argument is a skill that can help you tenfold in more situations than you can imagine. So I'm going to share with you the Toulmin method for argumentation. But before being able to build a good argument, we first need to understand the difference between inductive and deductive arguments. A deductive argument is a category of logical argument where the premises are definitively proving the truth of the conclusion. Here is an example. All mammals have brains. My cat is a mammal. My cat has a brain. The conclusion that my cat has a brain is beyond doubt, therefore 100% certain. By contrast, an inductive argument is a type of logical argument where the truth of the observations provide good reasons to believe that the conclusion is probably true. For example, Most winds come from the north. It's getting windy. This wind must come from the north. Note the difference between the two. In deductive reasoning, we can be 100% sure that the conclusion is true based on the premises. While in inductive reasoning, there is a degree of probability that the conclusion is true following from the observations but it could also be false. In the inductive argument here, the first observation states that most winds come from the north, not all winds. So we cannot conclude with certainty in this example that the current wind comes from the north. It's only probable. However, the fact that my cat has a brain is proven 100% true from the two premises stated here. To learn more about deductive and inductive arguments, watch our video on this topic. You likely can already tell that deductive arguments are not extremely useful in everyday debates. While these are fantastic for science or logic, a lot of the everyday life issues and discussions cannot be proven with certainty. People need to use argumentation in order to present their claims to others, as a day-to-day -day activity. By contrast, scientists use arguments to discover new ideas, so deductive argumentation in their case is essential. However, the argumentation necessary for persuasion on topics which cannot be proven with certainty relies heavily on inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is also known as informal logic, and one of the most important figures of informal logic was Stephen Tolman. He was a British philosopher and educator, who developed one of the most significant contributions to how we analyze arguments, which occur in natural language. He came up with a model for analyzing arguments, which is used successfully in teaching students how to write assignments, while applying critical thinking at the same time. Let's take a look at Toulmin's model for argumentation. Toulmin set about to create a template to use when building reliable arguments. For an argument to be considered good, it has to be formed of six components. And here is an example of an argument containing all elements proposed by Toulmin. I'm arguing that technology might make us more alone. This is the claim. The word might, used in the claim, suggests a moderate degree of probability. This is called a qualifier. To support my claim, I use varied data, such as the idea that young people who are not good at socializing in real life fill this gap by using the internet and the phone. 
Also, the lonelier young people are, the more likely they are to become addicted to technology, deepening this vicious circle. Two elements constitute the warrants. First, the fact that young people with internet and smartphone addiction have high levels of loneliness and poor social relations. The second warrant is the fact that loneliness is a predictor of internet addiction. To back the warrants, I include the links of the studies which show evidence for these claims. You can see this in the description of this video. I also consider a counter-argument, such as the idea that technology does help those who are already good at socializing. For example, older adults using mobile applications to tackle social isolation. Including rebuttals in your argument is always a good idea, because it gives you the opportunity to analyze the weaknesses of your claim and also predict the counter-arguments that the other party might bring to the table. Let's do a quick summary. The six elements proposed by Tulmin for a reliable argument are 1. Claim The conclusion of the argument, although the claim is not always the final conclusion of the argument, and sometimes it can represent an intermediate step used as data for the next inference. 2. Qualifiers. These are statements or phrases which reflect the level of probability or the truth of the claim. 3. Data. This is the evidence, the information, it could be the events or even artistic proofs which support the truth of the argument. The argument without data does not have any real value. 4. Warrants. The reasons that help move the argument from the data to the claim. Many times the warrants are general and implicit, and as Tulmin points out, they help answer the question, how do you get there? 5. Backing. These are statements that serve as evidence for showing that the warrants are true. And finally, 6. Rebuttals. These are exceptions to the claim, showing circumstances when the claim might not be true. Mm -hmm.